Hello fellow hunters of the blue and welcome to, well, a very different place than usual because today I will tackle something that I've been thinking about doing for a while. Today I will show you how to take amazing pictures of your minis. Let's get cracking. First let's talk about the overall setup that I use. It's quite simple and very cheap, but it does take a bit of space. I have two IKEA desk lamps fully articulated with two identical light bulbs. That is extremely important. You want all the light hitting your model to be exactly the same. In the same way, you should close your window blinds if possible. That way the white balance will be perfect. Covering those bulbs are two pieces of wet pad paper, but any translucent paper will work just fine. This will help diffuse the light that hits our models. You will also need some kind of backdrop. Personally, I like these ones from Massive Voodoo. You have the link to them in the description below. They are beautiful and free, but a simple sheet of paper will also work well. I find it's better if the backdrop has a neutral color, but that's just more a matter of personal taste. I use a decent DSLR camera to take my pictures. It was secondhand and quite affordable. It's an investment I don't regret making, but the modern phone will work fine too. If you want to know what camera I use, it's a Canon 200D with stock 1855mm lens. If you use a real camera, you will also need a tripod. It doesn't need to be a very expensive tripod, but don't go for the cheap ones either, as we want a decent amount of stability. If you plan to use a mobile phone, you can very much skip this section, but I think it's interesting nonetheless. First of all, please let me clarify that I'm not an expert on cameras at all. All that I know I've learned from trial and error, and online tutorials, but I've developed a method of setting up a camera that is both simple and gives great results for our particular needs. Uh, what I first do is set up the Mini in its place, turn on my lights, turn off any other light or close the windows and place the camera in the correct angle. Then set the camera in the manual mode, usually it's just noted with an M on the dial. You will be able to adjust a lot of different things in this mode, but we will only care about three, and that is in this order. ISO, aperture and shutter speed. The ISO is noted here on the lower row. Set the ISO to the lowest po value possible, usually that's about 100, and don't ever touch that again. The aperture is in the row above. This is noted by a number preceded by an F. Its range will vary from camera to camera and also lens to lens. In my camera with this lens, it goes from F5.6 to f29. The aperture will determine how much of your models is in focus. You want enough to have all your parts of your miniature in focus. The lower the value, the less model that will be in focus. For a 28mm model with a conservative pose, something in, in the range of f10 should be more than enough. This might require some experimentation, but in case of doubt, go higher. I've only used things like f22 for quite massive models, but something in the ballpark of f16 will have you well covered for 90% of what we will ever shoot. We now move into the shutter speed. The shutter speed is the value on the top row in this camera. This is determined in seconds, usually a fraction as it's really quick. My camera, as you can see, ranges from 30 seconds to 1,000th of a second. How quick your shutter needs to be will depend on your setting. I can't give you a number that will work for you. You will need to try it out. When you have done a couple of pictures of different size models, you will develop a sense of what ballpark number your speed should be. As you can see, I have my lighting set, my mini in place, my camera ready. Let's take a cool picture. I think an aperture of 14 will be plenty enough. I'm guessing from the screen on my camera, around one fifth of a second seems to be a good shutter speed. You can see both values here. This is the fraction, so it's, it's one fifth, and this is the F, the aperture, which is 14. The ISO, as I said, will not be touched, will be always be 100 for our needs. Now, before you take the picture, you want to be able to make 
the camera shoot without touching it. That is also extremely important. Some cameras have remote controls. Others like mine can be controlled with my phone, but you don't need any of that. You can just use the timer that all cameras have. In my case, I will set it for two seconds. And done! As you can see, extremely nice, sharp pictures with good lighting and very good colors. Let me take a quick picture with my phone in full auto mode so you can see the difference. Also, extremely nice, the setup does all the hard work for you. If you can afford all this space, I highly recommend it. So thank you very much for watching guys, and I really hope you found this quick guide useful. As always, I'll catch you in the next one, bye! Do you want to decide what I paint in the channel, or want direct feedback from me? Then consider Patreon, you have the link to my Patreon in the description below. Patreon helps me do all the cool projects that I want to make and helps me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid, no content will ever be hidden behind a paywall, but it's a nice way to help me and you will get something back for your generosity. As I said guys, thank you very much for watching and a special thank you to Kevin Sulas, Kidlenad, Nad Lindemann, Victor Domen, ILJN, Jonathan Ekelun, Kieran O'Morphy, Michael Boyer, Richard Martin, Oliver James Packwell for being the coolest specials on the planet. Be like these fine folks, join my Patreon and take control.